there's no need to get tense. Relax, reflex, condense. Subscribe, baby, subscribe. Recently, I decided to stock up on some frequently used electrolytic capacitors suitable for high-fidelity, solid-state equipment. As I researched which ones to buy, though, I quickly got overwhelmed and decided it would be simpler if I just shopped within one brand of capacitors. I chose Nishikon as they have a good reputation for quality. Even when shopping just Nishikon, though, I found that the same value capacitors were available in many different series, all with widely varying prices. Nishikon has a special line of capacitors designed just for audio, and within that line alone, there are 17 different series. In the end, I purchased the Nishikon Audio Application Kit and the 370 Lighting Kit. The audio kit has values up to 330 microfarad, and the lighting kit has values up to 3300. Between the two kits, I have a good stockpile to cover much, but not all, of the electrolytic capacitors I'll need. To repair this integrated amp, for example, I still had to separately order these 1000 and 2300 microfarad caps. Even after ordering my capacitors, I was still confused about Nishikon's lineup and decided to do more research to clear things up for myself and to make this video for you. I'll break down each series in Nishikon's audio line and will compare their features and prices among each other and also to their general purpose capacitors. In this spreadsheet, I've broken their audio line into three general product lines, miniature, large, and chip. Remember, these are all electrolytics. Note that the miniature and chip series have the prefix U, and the large series have the prefix L. In the spreadsheet, I've added a hyphen between the U or L prefix and the series name. That's because Nishikon sometimes lists the caps with the U or L prefix and sometimes without. Let's first look at the miniature audio capacitors. I've broken these down into five categories. First is the small category, which have the smallest physical size of the miniatures. The UMWs have a 5mm height, the USWs a 7mm height, and the UFWs are a bit larger. The standard grade category includes the 105 Celsius rated UKT series, and the UKW series that Nishikon says is good for video as well as audio. They don't explain why this would be, and I haven't been able to determine this from the specifications. The high-grade category also includes a 105C rated series called UKA and an AV series called UFG. The UFG is also part of Nishikon's Muse lineup, and it's the fine gold variant. I told you this was confusing. The premium grade category includes just the UKZ series, which is rated for the typical negative 40 to 85 degrees Celsius and not the higher 105 degree rating. Last in the miniature audio line is the bipolarized category, which includes the UDB and UES. Bipolarized electrolytics are often used in speaker crossovers, and Nishikon says the UDB series is specifically designed for that purpose. Note, though, that Nishikon has flagged the UDB series as having values which are scheduled to be discontinued. They're also very expensive, indicating that they may be harder to find as they're going out of stock. Perhaps that's why Nishikon also offers the bipolarized UES series, which is part of their Muse line. Nishikon says the standard grade caps are for, quote, general audio equipment, the high-grade caps feature, quote, selected materials for superior, rich, clearer sound, and the premium grade are, quote, ideally suited for first-class audio. But what if any differences exist between the standard, high, and premium grades? The only spec that could possibly make a difference in sound quality is tangent of loss. It tells us how much of a capacitor's charge is lost to heat. A tangent of 0.1 means it will have 10% loss. Obviously, the lower the number, the better. Tangent of loss is useful because it shows the overall efficiency of the capacitor from the combined effects of impedance, leakage, and ESR. Within the small category, standard grades are only available, but loss-wise they perform admirably compared to their larger cousins. There's just 12% loss for the UFWs and an even lower 10% for the USWs and UMWs. 
For the 105 C caps, there are no differences in loss between the standard and high grade caps. Both have 14% loss. For the AV caps, the higher grade UFGs do have less loss at 10% compared to the standard grade UKWs at 12. As expected, you'll have to pay more for the improvement. The premium UKZ series has a premium price, but does it offer premium performance? It appears so, as it has the lowest loss of all the miniatures at just 8%. Is it worth spending more for this better performance? That I can't tell you, but I do suspect that even the most golden-eared among us would have a hard time hearing the difference between an 8% loss capacitor and one with 12%. Still, when repairing top-of-the-line equipment, even skeptical me might decide to splurge just to have that extra peace of mind. Looking at the bipolarized miniatures, the UDB series first appears to have lower loss at 10% compared to the UESs at 12%. But look closely, and you'll find they've been measured at different frequencies. So I'm not sure it's an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. And again, just look at the price difference. I'd say, for Nishikon's bipolarized audio line, stick with the UESs unless you can get the UDBs for a good price. I compared Nishikon's audio series miniatures to their general purpose counterparts and found that, for the most part, the audio series offers a similar value. The exception I found, though, was again with the 105C rated caps. As you can see, the non-audio general purpose UVZ series not only outperforms the UKTs and UKAs, but they're also cheaper. At least the UKA series does appear to have a higher endurance rating than the general purpose UVZs, which is measured at 2000 hours instead of 1000. But I just don't see any reason to get the UKT series, when the standard grade UVZs offer the same performance at a much better price. Moving on to Nishikan's large audio electrolytics, I've broken them down into four categories. High voltage, high grade, higher grade, and highest grade. All have components rated under 100 volts, except the LKX, which has caps rated from 200 to 450 volts. They're all snap-in style, which is suitable for PC boards. The LKG series are also available with solder lugs as an option, although more capacitance and voltage values are available as snap-ins. The LKG series comes in three grades, type one, type two, and type three. Within the high voltage category, there's only one grade, the LKX. These have the lowest loss compared to the other large caps, but it's not useful to compare the LKX series against the others, as they're really a different type suited for much higher voltages. Looking at the high and higher grade large audio caps, we see that they all have similar performance at 25% loss. Unless you need solder lugs, I would forget Nishikon's marketing claims that the higher grades sound better and just get the cheapest among them that you can find. Based on mouser pricing, it appears that the LKS series will be your best bet there. If you prefer solder lugs over snap-in though, you'll need to go with the LKGs. Looking at the highest grade LKG Type 3, we see that it does have better performance than Types 1 and 2, as well as the LKS. 20% loss versus 25. It comes at a premium price though, so you'll have to decide if it's worth it. As I said about the higher performing miniatures, I suspect that it would be difficult to hear the difference between a 5% margin of loss. But when repairing top of the line equipment, I still might splurge on the Type 3s to have that peace of mind. Or would I? Digging deeper, we find that Nishikon's General Purpose LLS series offers the same 20% loss but is much cheaper. In fact, it's even cheaper than the Types 1 and 2 and LKS with better performance at just 20% loss compared to 25. Granted, the General Purpose LLS series are only available in Snap-in, so if you really want solder lugs, it might be worth spending more for the LKGs. Otherwise, I don't see the advantage. What do you have to say about that, Nishikon? Well, their marketing department says that their audio capacitors are, quote, designed to give premium sound quality when compared to general purpose capacitors, and that they're, quote, ideally suited for first-class audio equipment where qualitative and quantitative characteristics are required. I couldn't agree more. Quantitative characteristics are required, and you can't make 
qualitative claims without them. In the case of their large can capacitors, though, Nishikon's audio caps simply don't seem to have any quantitative measurements to back up their qualitative claims. Of course, this is nothing new in the audio industry, where making claims that better sound can be achieved through means that can't be measured is de rigueur. I'm of the opinion, though, that if it can't be measured, it can't be heard. Just using exotic or expensive materials can't magically make something sound better. So don't buy a Nishikon capacitor because Nishikon says it sounds better. Buy a Nishikon cap because it provides the performance you're looking for at a price you're willing to spend. That, of course, goes for any manufacturer. Sometimes the audio-labeled cap will be the better choice, and sometimes the general-purpose cap will be better. Just do your homework. To make that a little easier, I'll leave you now with some uninterrupted video of the spreadsheets I made to give you a chance to grab some screenshots if you're interested. To stay updated about my new videos, please subscribe and click the bell. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you soon.